We're live. We're live. I don't feel alive. No, me either. It's, it's early Monday morning. This is a surprise, unannounced whiskey vault live stream. Yes. Uh, mainly, I'm pulling up chat on my phone. Oh, yeah, volume you, down. You noob. Uh, <laughs> the, re the reason why we wanted to do a live stream is because the past several live streams we've, we've been doing have been uh, exclusively for people on Patreon. Right. And we wanted to just jump in here and say, hey, even if you're not the Patreon, let's do a freaking live stream. <laughs> but but it was unannounced because, oh, you're on that? Yeah. Because uh, we wanted to reward the early birds here. And also I have to go to the passport office whenever the show usually comes out yeah. for our Ireland trip there. So as is tradition, Daniel's going to be <laughs> hypnotized by. I know it's. Like watching one of those hourglass things, drip <laughs> sand, or a fireplace. It's a like, live stream tradition. Oh, hey. Just Daniel staring at the screen. <laughs> uh, so so there's, <laughs> what are we talking about here? Well, we're going to talk about a couple of different things. Uh, early this morning, I realized one thing we can't talk about is a lot of the distillery stuff because... This is the vault channel. This is the vault channel. Yeah. But uh, I, had, I found a really cool post from the Whiskey Tribe Facebook group. That will go through and it's little known facts that you think are really interesting and cool little pieces of knowledge about whiskey okay that you recently learned okay and a lot of these things i'm going through is like oh i didn't know that i didn't know that i didn't know that either <laughs> now these aren't going to be vetted right so somebody may have learned something that's totally wrong we're going to go through that and then also we're going to go through the questions that you guys have in here uh, so what's one of the uh, things you didn't know? Well, we'll just jump right into it. I mean, that really would probably be most things, right? <laughs> you can spell whiskey with no E? That's great. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> the, the post was from <coughs> Brendan Keith Hooligard. Okay. And he said, let's do a mini masterclass. Share something you know about whiskey that everyone else may not, whether it's production, taste, branding, or whatever. Okay. Something that will help everyone leave with a little, uh, leave a little smarter than they came. He'll start. He says more scotch is sold in France in one month than cognac an entire year. Oh, did you hear this? No, that's cool. Scotch in France yeah. is way more popular. Oh than yeah, cognac. who knew? Now well, again, that may be total bullshit. I mean that that probably started. Yeah. Back when whiskey really got its foothold in the world in general, yeah, which was when the Beetle took out almost all the vineyards in Europe uh, and wiped out wine production for a, a long time. So, did you know? And we we talked about this with the Iron Guys. Yeah, uh, Dennis in Texas yeah. and the Iron and the Iron Guys was instrumental mm. in rebuilding the French wine industry. What? Yes, because they found a. Um, this is Iron Root Republic. Yeah, they found a strain, and that's why it's called Iron Root. Okay. Right? They found a grape vine strain that was beetle resistant, uh -huh. and they spliced it with the French yeah. vines. Yeah, yeah. And it helped the French vineyards rebuild. Really? Matter of fact, it's a Texan that helped rebuild the entire French now, wine. Now, specifically, industry. it wasn't the Licorice Brothers. <laughs> no, but <laughs> no, it was the, way back in the day. Area, way yeah. back in the yeah. day, whenever they needed. Uh, a leg up on apparently this beetle infestation. That's weird, man. All right. We got... Uh, oh, wait. Benjamin E says, hey, how many cigars did you smoke yesterday? Well, yeah, cigars are a coping mechanism for me. <laughs> and so I discovered that I really love hot tea and... Cigars. Cigars. Yeah, it's your so, replacement. Uh, seven. Really? <laughs> yeah, not all at once. God, I remember when we did uh, the Whiskey Tribe episode about whiskey and cigar pairing, and we were going through... I don't know, it seemed like seven or eight cigars. I was the most hungover I've ever oh, been yeah. in my life. I didn't really drink that whiskey, much whiskey. Yeah. It was all the cigars that just put me on my ass for two days. We got Paul Maskey. <laughs> While most bourbon is made in Kentucky, bourbon does not have to be made in Kentucky to be considered bourbon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's super common. A lot of people think it's not bourbon unless it comes from Kentucky. Well, a lot of Kentuckians yeah. think it's not bourbon <laughs> unless it's from Kentucky. Don't uh, ever tell anybody that in Kentucky, though. You don't wanna, we don't want to ruin their world. Um, and uh, Brendan Keith, oh, this is the, the OP. Um, single malt does not, in fact, refer to the amount of different malted barleys being used in the brewing of low yes. wines. Yes, that's correct. But simply means single distillery malt whiskey. Yes. Okay, what do you mean? Yeah, by I, well, so remember, we always talked about this, how 
it's the English language is confuses confusing in that we put our qualifiers before the thing. Right. So adjectives come before the noun. Right. And that means you can get a whole list of things before you land on what we're talking about. Right. Right. I love this huge red sure. round. So if you're moist, we start there yet. Yeah, right. In, in the case of my brother. Yeah. He'll put 10 to 15 minutes of qualifiers before we actually. Start <laughs> the thing. And well, then by the time you get to that, he's like, what were we talking about? I'm lost. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas, you know, in like Spanish, you have, Here's the ball that is red, right? You have yeah. the so the thing is because we're English speakers, we it leads you to think that single is a qualifier for malt hmm. when it's not. It's two different words talking about two different things. So single is the section talking about location, hmm. and uh, malt is talking about grain use. If you see an interesting question in there, go ahead and let. One was what coffee am I drinking? That's interesting. Oh, this well, actually, it was because it was a gift from a magnificent bastard. Oh, and I can't remember his name right now. Okay, but I took it home because it was so good. Uh, and did you write his name on the coffee bag? Yeah. Okay. But I forgot it. Sorry. <laughs> Gotten a couple of bags of coffee recently uh, from we, the crew, and they're amazing. Paul Billingham. In Australia, original Jim Beam is 37% and still called bourbon whiskey because our laws don't protect consumers. Sad face the emoji, sad face the emoji. Yeah. Really? 37%? There's a couple of countries that you can get as low as 37. <laughs> well, they already have to pay so much to I get know. whiskey and then they get it proofed down. Yeah. Dude. Hey, um, one question here was, so why is it that Pappy's is and held in, who was it? Sorry, let me come back. Why is it that Pappy's is held in such high regard? That's Nathan Radke. Now, I so isn't there a story about Pappy's getting a bunch of their whiskey stolen? Yeah, but that's really was that's that not, not it? why it was because the narrative in my that head that was way after it was famous. Okay, the which is why they stole no, no, no. It. The narrative in my head was it's always been a well respected whiskey, mm. but at a certain point, a whole bunch was stolen, and then it entered into the zeitgeist of news stories and people that don't consider themselves whiskey people start hearing about this whiskey was just so so amazing and so cherished that thieves literally broke in and stole giant giant amount uh well no this truck couple of barrels no 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 huge like <laughs> backing up semi trucks <laughs> this is the narrative oh, okay that i'm saying oh it, this it, is your it, story okay it, it, no this is the narrative that is floating out there like this is so good they were like they people robbed it and it was selling for like crazy amounts of money is it just old and very well? Well, okay. So here's what it is. And Stephen Reynolds, in. Stephen is right. It's it's rarity, but that's only part of the story. So what happened is, um, essentially, you know, Pappy is a historical name and a highly respected dude in whiskey. Sure. And he used to, as everyone knows. Um, <clears throat> There's in a big enough warehouse, there's a sweet spot that these barrels just always seem to turn out amazing. Okay. Right? Yeah. Something about the weather and climate and things like that. Sure. And so they, it's a tradition for a lot of big distillers to select uh, special barrels and set them aside for either just themselves mm -hmm. or for release gifts for friends and family sure. or things like that. Right. right. And the storyline is essentially that Pappy is bourbon made in the distillery coming from the same things that a bunch of other bourbon brands are pulling from right. only these are the sweet spot barrels okay so in theory they are so top of the morning to you eric they are um like sweet spot best of the best right but as they've scaled up to try to meet a little bit more pappy demand who knows uh, but they don't ever tell you how many barrels are going into it so and then on top of that they have kept the releases limited enough that like diamonds as steven said rarity helps so in our experience you know the same distillery going from barrel to barrel there are definite differences you can pick out from these barrels but that's never been more than like you know 15 20 percent if something is wildly different it's not a different whiskey though no nope. it's well, just it's just you know uh, a, a somewhat different path i found it could be almost 20 percent. yeah that's what we're saying yeah. All right. So we got Brendan Keith. No, we already wait. Brendan Keith Hulagard again. While using used oak is most common in Scotland, it is not required. Right. Virgin oak casks can and are used, but not often because yes. you get the tanniny. You have to fight off the. Yeah, you need to. Um, yeah, 
Anyway, it's just a flavor profile that they've chosen. Mm -hmm. they, traditionally, Scotland has almost always used used barrels. Right. And that was because even back in the early days of using barrels for whiskey. Because they're cheap. Barrels are expensive. <laughs> and it was a hell of a lot cheaper mm -hmm. to source barrels than it was to make barrels from the uh, themselves. Now, we cooper them. And we found some really interesting barrel finishing sources. Like we basically there's companies that all they do is sell used barrels for finishing. You know? Yeah. We can get different kinds of beers, wines, um, other spirits. And uh, we're, yeah, we're looking to get more and more into finishing options that we think could turn out weird and amazing. <laughs> Dan, Dan Lapine said, when will Rex stop being a slut and cover up that ankle? <laughs> it's like the 19, 1920s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you know that um, on the weekend, uh, uh, Dan Swank was mentioning this. Um, uh, Akavit Roy yeah. had a guest, special guest. Yeah. And uh, I tuned in because I wanted to see who the special guest was. It was Ralphie. Oh, Ralphie. He got Ralphie to come on his show. Right on. And they hung out for over an hour. I had to leave after an hour, but. Yeah, uh, yo, it was a good time. After man. the live stream, check out. Uh, I'm assuming they just posted the video right after. It was yeah, it was for it was in Patreon for the link, but I don't know if it goes live to everybody else after that. Okay. So I, I don't remember. I don't know what his tradition is. Does he post it to the general YouTube channel once the Patreon people right. had a chance to see it? I don't know. Octavia Vite. So yeah. Instead yeah, of a U, put if a V. Somebody in the comments knows and can link to it. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, we got Brandon Schlacht. Whiskey, and again, none of these are vetted. These are just both. Yeah. This is maybe, it, this is interesting if it's true. Whiskey kills bacteria better than any other spirit. No. Mm. no I choose to believe. Yes. <laughs> I choose to believe that it cures the common cold. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you do have an interesting concoction of, it's really just whiskey and cigars. He, he Wait a minute. shock treatments his body with smoke and alcohol. I don't ever wear, I don't own white socks. I own Gretchen's hassling me for my socks. Yeah? Yeah. Look, these are my socks. You get the green? Green. These are a gift, and they're dad joke socks. Oh. <laughs> They've got random dad jokes printed on them in basically camo. So you drape your body in that. Yeah. Rip. Chad, what are you seeing over there that's making you laugh? It's dad joke socks. Yeah, oh, you like that, huh? Uh, so, circling back to Iron Root, if you haven't heard, they very recently won Best Corn Whiskey in the World again. I think they won it in 2017, right? Uh, all right. Basically, they've been trading the honors with Balconis. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's back and forth, depending on. But that's pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. By the way, I think so. Oh, and Jason Whiskey Wise was the mod on the uh, for the Akavit Ralphie. Yeah. Deal? And he's hanging out with us again today. Oh, right on. Good to see him, man. Um, I, I, got, I texted... Um, Jonathan. Yeah. Jonathan, After I found out they won. Jonathan. Uh, Rich, yeah. From Iron Root. And I, and I said, I, I did the meme of, um, or the animated of, uh, what's his name in Leonardo DiCaprio. Mm -hmm. I am king of the world in the, in the front of the boat, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, I said, this is how I picture you coming back from London. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, then he said, that's exactly what it looks like. I even printed a boat <laughs> for my trip home on, on retrospect. Maybe a bad idea. <laughs> See, I just imagine Jonathan <laughs> approaching Leo and saying, draw me like one of your French girls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I hope he sees this. <laughs> um, and uh, you mentioned Balcones. Didn't Jared win uh, Best Distiller in the United States recently? Yes. Like, or, Well, Best Distiller in... Period in the world, okay, voted by the world of whiskeys. I thought it was in the U.S. No, just the world. period. Yeah, holy shit! Uh, got the oh, Norway is getting into whiskey, yeah, and it has a similar climate to Scotland. So they, we've had some Norwegian whiskeys. I think we had one. Right, we don't, it's not like we've got a plethora not, of Norwegian whiskeys. You say you say Norway, like we've had the Swedish, like the nation is getting into whiskey. Yeah, that I mean, like making, like distilling, they're starting to distill. So Evidently. this is from uh, Kira Haas. So I, uh, we've had Swedish. I've had several Swedish whiskeys. I haven't but shared I'm, my Norwegian whiskey. <laughs> you evidently have a Norwegian stash. <laughs> <laughs> so many stashes. Uh, uh, wild, burr, burr, burr. wild whiskey. This is 
Brendan again. Oh, I've got a good whiskey question. Go ahead, Brendan. While whiskey is generally made of either corn, rye, wheat, or barley, and any mix of those mentioned, whiskey can be made with any grain, mm -hmm. including oats, rice, and even quinoa. Yes, yes. absolutely. I, I know we've had oats. We've had quinoa. Rice, we've had oats. Quinoa. And rice, yeah, we've yeah. had all those. Yep. Uh, Crimson Blood Rose. Question for Daniel, but uh, what, Rex, you can make something up. Why does whiskey not generally put release years on the bottle like wine? Uh, because it doesn't age in the bottle, right? I don't know. I'm making <laughs> something up. You did make something up. <laughs> no, that's not true. I mean, that could help. Wait, it doesn't age that in the bottle. Help. It, that, you're right. But that's not really the, I mean, sure, why not? Let's go with that one. Part A. Done. Small, lowercase a. Nailed it. Is that... It does no whiskey does not age in the bottle, but it's also because uh, because of distilling, it de terroir does not affect whiskey as much as wine. Now it does affect whiskey, and there are people who are building entire distilleries to try to to establish terroir for whiskey. Right, and they're having some interesting results. Right, uh, that are proving that it does. Make a difference, sure, but not near as much still as wine does, sure. right? Um, and, and so one of the things that Chris said when we were doing the William Chris episode yeah. about wine finishing a whiskey, um, he <laughs> and in the moment I was thinking, oh, that sounds so pretentious, but you're not wrong. He he said we don't we don't make whiskey, we grow whiskey. Because the finished wine itself is so connected to the the weather and the soil and yeah, we know, grow what wine. happened while that was growing. It's like we grow no no wine. We don't wine. make wine. Yeah, yeah. We grow wine. We grow wine. And which is yeah. absolutely true. Yeah. And so because of that, yeah, if you have a weird year mm -hmm. with your rain uh, numbers going up by inches or a dry spell or a colder than usual, earlier than usual, mm -hmm. or hotter than usual, earlier than usual, all of those things will affect the grapes. Yeah. And that will affect all the wine being made in that year. Yeah, yeah. And so vintage years is, are important. Now, uh, Ball Blair, which was doing some really cool stuff for a while, they put their year, their uh, distillation year, 99. Oh. That, remember we've had some of those? Uh, I remember yeah. Ball Blair being surprisingly, like I didn't have any expectations, never heard of it. Yeah. It was... Amazing. I absolutely love the ball player. I wish it had a lot more distribution. It was it was more well known. Uh, but that was a truly exceptional whiskey. And there was a few <laughs> whiskey. Wise. There was a few different <laughs> bottlings. I swear yeah. to God, it's like it's like no, every, no, no. This is good. Every time we live stream, no, no, no. I, you're like a you're a squirrel. I'm listening. You're I'm a squirrel. This is a con contribution to that. <laughs> Go ahead. He said. He said, said. He said. I don't make bad decisions. I grow bad decisions. <laughs> See, that's yeah. worth laughing over. All right. We got Pete Kirkwood. During the Second World War, the Auchentoshan Distillery, which was fairly near the shipyards and on the Clyde River in Glasgow. Wait, I get hassled for this. Glasgow. Glasgow. It's not Glasgow. 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 If it was in Texas, Glasgow. if it was in Texas, the locals would all call it Glasgow. Anyways, <laughs> the Auchentoshan Distillery was bombed. That resulted in a burning river of whiskey flowing into the Clyde. Oh, yeah. you ain't got nothing on that 1792. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it was hardcore, man. <laughs> that would be like 1792 fell over, dumped in the river, and they caught fire. And then caught fire. Yes. Yeah. Or caught fire on its way down to the river. You know what? I mean, it, it, there's a lot of people and business. I mean, it wiped out a lot of stuff and hurt a lot of people. Right. But imagine if you're just walking and all of a sudden a river of flaming whiskey comes <laughs> flooding down the street. You know what? The, uh, the whiskey... Lover in me, it's like, oh, it's really sad, but the anarchist in me, it's like, <laughs> yeah, that would be amazing. Okay, we got um, Charlie Duckworth. 41 bottles of scotch were exported from Scotland every second oh. in, two, in 2018. Whoa, dog. Whoa. We're doing, yeah, it's, yeah, we got a ways to go before we meet that pace. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, and Minnow Greet says, 90% of all scotch sales come from export. Yes. That makes sense. I believe it. Well, because, and they did, uh, so there was a point in history where there was a shortage of whiskeys and, and world complications. And Scotland and Ireland responded to it two different ways. Mm -hmm. Ireland, and it wasn't at the same time, but 
Ireland responded by raising taxes on export, mm -hmm. which immediately yeah. dropped the amount of Irish whiskey going into the world. And it helped to collapse the Irish whiskey industry. Yeah. Scotland responded to the same thing with a reduction on export, which immediately flooded the world with Scottish whiskey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got Nathan Beck. I've heard this before. There's more barrels of bourbon in Kentucky than people. Yeah, that's crazy. And in Scotland, Ben Clarkson followed up and he said nearly four barrels of maturing scotch per person in Scotland. Every human being in Scotland has four barrels to that. Wow. <laughs> well, there's, there's not a lot of people in Scotland compared to. <laughs> okay. And Emil Apostol. The Philippines just released their first single malt whiskey. Huh. So apparently really? there's a lot. Of oh, wait. <laughs> is that the one we tried? This is Crow's. That had the papyrus Chris font. Crow's single malt is the name of the brand. I thought that was from the. Oh, it was Guam. Yeah, it was Guam. It was Guam. Yeah. No, there's been Never a few. Mind. There's been a few whiskeys that are rocking the papyrus, which no comment. Oh, it's such a fun, fun snub. I'm sorry. It's, uh, Richard Smallwood. If you drink too much whiskey, it will appear that someone broke into your house, trashed your place, and threw up on your cat. But it's okay. They never take anything. Yeah. <laughs> that is vetted and confirmed. Oh, uh, good times. Uh, and then you've mentioned this on some episodes. This is from Douglas Allen. Almost all Canadian whiskey distills each grain separately and then blends them together either before or after aging. So there is no match bill. For, for where? What? Almost all Canadian whiskey dist oh. distills each grain separately. Yes. Then blends them together either before or after aging. So does that mean, so he says, so there is no mash bill. Is, there's an after the fact mash bill. An so, after the fact mash bill. Well, sort of. So he's absolutely right, but it, it's not... It, Here's the weird thing about Canada. Yeah. Every time you come up with, here's what Canada does, you'll find like 14 exceptions. Mm -hmm. But yes, that is a, something that is unique to Canada is that distilling individual grains and blending them together. Mm -hmm. And it's more the dominant big guys that are doing it. A lot of the smaller ones are doing more traditional mash bills. Yeah. But that is the source of the entire fiasco with the Crown Royal bourbon mash label. Oh, yeah. Because what happens, Crown, Crown Royal decided to do a whole release where they did an American style mash bill right. all together before they distilled it. Right. And so what they were trying to explain to the world is this is a bourbon mash style release mm -hmm. as opposed to how we normally do it. Right. So they're trying to be clear, but because it had the word bourbon on it, it violated American bourbon laws. We so got they had to change the label. Tom McCafferty speaking the truth. A lot of people probably know this, but Texas liquor laws are really effed up. It's yeah. not only Texas, though. It's kind of most a states. A lot of states. Most states in the country. Just unnecessarily convoluted. Uh, Eric Wayne Anderson, many of you may know this, but Frank Sinatra was buried with a bottle of Jack Daniels. Yeah. Huh. All right. <laughs> and uh, so I, Jim Lamb. We talk about how different factors affect the taste of our favorite drink, the heat, humidity, environmental factors, et cetera. Uh, even gravity may have an effect. They did an experiment on the International Space Station and found that it may have, it may have an effect on the terpenes. It's an organic compound mm -hmm. that provide flavor to whiskey. So I would suspect just the most glib interpretation of what I think gravity is doing. It's pushing, it's adding pressure to get the whiskey in deeper into the wood. Mm -hmm. In theory. It could be that simple. But then I don't know how they account for the change in uh, uh, atmospheric pressure and, atmospheric and pressure. temperature because on the space station, you're not going to be able to... Yeah. All right. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> Eric Anders. Lagavulin is better than Ardbeck, I think. Ah. Uh -huh. All right. Any other questions, Daniel? Let's see. I'm trying to get to actual questions. Okay. Ask questions if you got them. Uh, Carta Kosis. I got this, Carta. Hold on. Carta Kosasi. Kosasi. Jack Daniel's home country of Moore is a – oh, home county of Moore is a dry county. So the product is not available for purchase at stores or restaurants within the county. Jack Daniels' home county is dry county. Yeah. 
That's rough. <laughs> I think that's amazing. All right. This one is getting pretty nerdy from Brendan again. Uh, the taller a, a pot still is, the more reflux occurs. This is when the vapors coat the sides of the still yes. and fall back down to be distilled again. Yes. This is how the more delicate and nuanced scotches are made. Um, I would say complex. Uh, an example of this is Glenn Morangy, who is in possession of the tallest pot stills in all of Scotland. Yeah, I've heard that. I'm not sure if it's still true. It was at one time. It could right. still be. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. The taller, the still. And so, uh, like, Akintoshin has mm -hmm. really tall stills. Yeah, yeah. And they're triple distilling. But, um, yeah, absolutely, that's a thing. And so you get these low-fat pot stills. They make the meatier, heavier whiskeys. Yeah, yeah. We got Martin Zolmus. If a, if a bottling states, uh, if there's a bottling in the states that is an Isla single malt but doesn't say which distillery, uh, you can be 90% sure that it's from Colila, maybe Balmore. If it's a smoky? Yeah, if it's an Isla like smoky. Yeah. Are those like the two main, <laughs> main sourced Isla? Colila is because it's owned by, if I'm not mistaken, it's it's one of the things in Johnny Walker. It's owned by all the same people, mm -hmm. right? And uh, yeah, it's for a long time, Colila didn't even release a single malt. Hmm. All of their stuff went into blends as far as general and then they started releasing the 12 yeah. to the public and then they've sort of gone on from there yeah, yeah. starting and they released their unpeated and now everyone gets to see what makes Cleo is so great all right uh jason said uh jason whiskey wise any single grains that you would recommend dude and there's just not a lot of good single grains uh, i mean I, sh I should say there's not a lot of single grains available in the u.s so we're not getting to pick from very many things i mean we get um, the Gervin I can get, mm -hmm. we can get, get the, um, oh crap. What's the other Port Dundas and, uh, Hague club, a blended, a blended grain or is it a single grain now? Anyway. Yeah. There's, there's just not a lot of options. I like all the ones that I've tried, but I don't have a particular it's, favorite. Do you like the Hague club? No, <laughs> except that one. That one's like nail polish remover just in a bottle. All right. Um, as somebody asked about, so. This is a little shout out for the Canadians. Yeah. This is my mug. Yeah. This is uh, it's from Nova Scotia. That's what it says on the mug. Okay. Nova Scotia. I bought this in Halifax. It's uh, at a tourist shop across I'm from. Absolutely stunned. That it's black. That it's black. It's super sexy though. Oh, speaking of, uh, Daniel recently uh, had his BMW total. Yeah. Not so, my fault. What is fault? And in a damn parking lot. In a parking lot, totally total. So he uh, got the interest money. He got a new car. He got uh, this this SUV looking thing. Yeah, sort of. All black, black dot rims, black interior. Yeah, <laughs> you got a problem, man. Yeah, you got a problem. It's a thing. I think you're borderline goth. You're the whiskey goth. The uh, <laughs> the whiskey goth. <laughs> now the new car is a. Uh, is a uh, Subaru cross track. Yeah. All right. This so now I can go off road. Anything else? Let's bring it in for a landing. I got to get to the passport place pretty soon. Oh, yeah. What yeah. time is it? It's nine. Oh, crap. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. We can ramble for a while, apparently. We really could. <laughs> Anything else? You guys, uh, anyway, you guys really showed up. This is fun. Yeah. I didn't know how um, many people would be. I didn't think anybody would be there. Alive. Uh, how do you, how do you, that's a quote. How do you, how do you drink whiskey all the time? Well, that's why we're taking a break. <laughs> uh, um, this is one of the reasons why my home collection is less of a collection and more of like <laughs> two to three bottles that I get into once every several weeks. Uh, but yeah, the, the whiskey that happens in between shoots, it's not really that much just because we have to shoot so frequently for the two different channels. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I keep I keep telling this. No one ever believes me, but um, all right. I'm going to stop reading the comments since we're pulling it in. Uh, no one ever believes me, but when I go home, I almost never drink whiskey. Mm. Uh, maybe on the weekend. Yeah. I might break into a bottle. Yeah. But by the time I get home, if we've been doing the show or we've been working at the distillery or we've been doing barrel testing yeah. or something like this, by the time I get home, you know, Hale will say, he wants some whiskey. And I'll be like, no, <laughs> I really don't. I'm good. 
I just, I just want water, <laughs> maybe iced tea. Right. Just keeping it simple. Uh, so we're in the midst of, uh, well, not the midst, we're, we're kicking off the dry week here in the Whiskey Vault. Yeah. So what are we going to do this week? I don't know. What are we going to do this week? Put what you think dry week episode should be because we're going to be shooting those. We today. need to shoot some today. We're shooting those today. Yeah. After we get back from the passport office. So maybe we'll mine the chat. Uh, put it on Facebook. Facebook? Yeah. Okay. Somebody start a Facebook. Christina. Well, Christina was in here. Put, She's... put the save chat button, Chad. Don't delete the chat. Well, either way. If it's deleted, it's Chad's fault. Yeah. <laughs> uh, either way, Christina, if you're still in there, uh, start a dry week recommendations chat yeah on facebook right on. or post it's not chat okay here's to fighting and stealing yeah, and the rest then, of my coffee and then not really drinking you want some coffee or you got coffee hey, give me a little coffee let's see let's see uh this, it's good this, this is magnificent bastard's name who's you who this you is kim x who i forgot <laughs> yeah smells good it is good all right guys um not cheers not cilantro not may you drink with us for a while <laughs> just just Bye. Bye. <laughs>